Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan. Hello everyone, Michael Jordan fans are the best and today I'm going to be doing a reaction video to why I choose Michael Jordan over Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the real GOATS. Let's get into it. Today, I'm going to uh, talk about two of the greatest of all times and uh, talk about why I, why I would choose Jordan over Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And uh and in this video, I'm also gonna go ahead and give my top five. Um, so, first of all, let me put some respect on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the player who has arguably had the greatest basketball career in its entirety. So I I'm, might be cutting him off. If he's including college and high school, then sure. Now, the pros, you can make that argument, but you got to remember that he was with Magic Johnson, who was winning MVPs, finals MVPs, and in comparison to what Michael Jordan did with the Bulls, it's it's totally not the same if you put it in context. If you're talking about from high school to college to the NBA, you know, and then another thing I want to say about Kareem is, and, you know, and I'm guilty of this too. I feel like today, when most people talk about Kareem, uh, the first thing that they think of is, you know, the NBA's most unguardable shot and the sky hook, and which is very true. But I feel like a lot of times uh, he gets reduced down to that. And uh, Kareem was much more than that sky hook. Uh, I was just, just the other day checking out some Kareem highlights. And, uh, you know, I just, I forgot just how many moves he had in general. If he's going to keep talking about offense, I'm going to cut to the defense. He's also one of the best block shotters of all time, one of the best rebounders of all time. When he was in the 70s, he absolutely dominated the league. He was a uh, six-time MVP in total throughout his career, most of them coming through the 70s when it was a player-voted award. Like, he had decent handles for a, a big man like that. He had a... Uh... Just a great arsenal of post moves, but then he also had a, a great jump shot. And uh, and to me, his jump shot was different than most big men. Like, his jump shot, he actually got into the air on that jump shot. Uh, you know, unlike most big men, I think, like, if, if you're going to qualify that stuff as, as a jump shot, a lot of the times it's, it's barely a jump shot. they they really not getting off the ground much. Yeah, I mean, like I said, a lot of it was defense. I know he, he seems to just be kind of free flow in this. Um, so I understand that. Uh, but yeah, he was good on offense. So yeah, Kareem had an actual jump shot. So, you know, uh, I just wanted to put some respect on Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Now, let's get into the reasons why I would choose Jordan over him. Uh, first of all, because me personally, I tend to uh, favor players who can create completely on their own. I I have to disagree with that to a certain respect. I don't think he could bring the ball up, dribble it, as well as a lot of these bigger players today, a la Jokic or some of the other point guards, to include Magic Johnson back in his day, who was six foot nine. I don't think he could create it all on his own. Now, if he got the ball in the post, yeah, he could put it down a couple times and make a move to the basket and or do the sky hook or whatever other move. Whereas, you know, most big men, they, they need somebody to get them the ball. Like, they, they couldn't go coast to coast, you know. They couldn't go coast to coast for the whole game, you know, bringing up the ball and creating their own shot. They need someone to get them the ball. So I personally tend to favor players who can create their own shot. Like, they don't need anyone to get them the ball. So if to me, that's one reason why I choose Jordan over Kareem. He was notorious, especially in the second half of his career when he was on the Lakers not running. So if you want to include when he was young and facing off one on one uh, with other big men, then sure. But I think that's a kind of a little overinflated about his one on one creating his own offense. And this next reason uh, I choose Jordan over Kareem, and 
you know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to give my top five in this video. So it kind of explain my top five as well. The next reason I choose Jordan over Kareem is because Kareem and Magic Johnson are two players in. I think I might have mistook what he was saying. I think he, I thought he was saying that Kareem could create his own offense. I didn't hear that transition. The top five who played with each other. And that's kind of why I have Magic Johnson where I have him as well. It's like Magic Johnson, you played with someone who is arguably the GOAT to a lot of people, uh, who is rightfully in the GOAT conversation, unlike LeBron James uh, fanboys. Kareem is rightfully in the GOAT conversation. I do think that LeBron has an argument, although, and I have them around the same, Kareem and LeBron. I, I think kind of similar. They had to have great players around them to get really far. Um, they brought Oscar Robertson to the Bucks when he won his first championship. They brought Magic Johnson to the Lakers when he won the rest of the, the five championships that he got. And both at a time, he, yes, he was a stat stuffer. He got a few finals MVPs. But however, I believe that both of those guys were the driving forces behind those championships, not Kareem. And uh, so, yeah, and Kareem is like, you play with a player who is in most people's top five. I think it's safe to say that Magic Johnson is in the majority of people's top five. So he's in mine. Uh, so for that reason, I choose Michael Jordan over Kareem as the GOAT and just as a player in general. Uh, Michael Jordan, you know, he, he only had Pippen. And Pippen is a top 50 player. But, you know, Pippen is not a, I don't think Pippen's in most people's top 10. You know, he's probably not in most people's top 20 or you know, top 30, you know, but he's a top 50 player. I so I don't have Pippen up there, but I wouldn't say that they didn't have anybody. They had, they had great teams. Now in respect to who were star studded in comparison to LeBron James and also Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in regards to the teams they had on their championship teams. Yeah. The star power wasn't quite there. But those teams were amazing. The Bulls teams were amazing. You got to have a great team to have such dynamic and just absolutely outstanding records for most of the seasons that they won the championships. I believe. So yeah, to 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 me, uh, that that's the difference. Is is Michael Jordan played with a top fifty player, <laughs> and Kareem played with a top five player. That that is why I choose Jordan over Kareem. Now, so let's get to my top five. So here's the way my top five works. I have uh, one through three is a definitive one through three. And the last two, four and five are interchangeable. My top five is number one. Uh, sure, we don't have to say it, but let's let's say it anyway. Uh, the GOAT, Michael Jordan. Number two is probably going to be controversial. To a lot of people, but I have Kobe Bryant. Uh I know a lot of people have Kobe Bryant as number two. I don't put him up there personally because Shaq was on his team. Shaq won all those finals MVPs and was absolutely the driving force of those that three-peat that they had. Kobe's an all-time great. He's an iconic player. So, But in, in comparison to somebody within that same era, Tim Duncan, in my opinion, was way better than Kobe Bryant. Not as an icon, not in his overall greatness, but as a basketball player. Uh, as number two for me. Number three, this is where I have Kareem. And I have Kobe over Kareem uh, for, that same, for that same reason. Because I prefer players who can create their own shot. Now, uh, you know, Shaq is maybe in some people's top five, but... I would say that Shaq is probably not in most people's top five. I don't understand why he's got Kareem up at number three when he went on this whole thing about Magic, uh, him playing with Magic, and that's why he's not in the conversation. In my opinion, outside of the longevity of the career, which you can equate with LeBron's, 
if anything, I think in regards to whole career longevity arguments, those two are more like versus the peak. Um, and if you take things into context, you had uh, Magic Johnson was once they got there, they went to nine NBA championships in 13 years and they won five. So and yes, uh, Kareem wasn't there all of those years. However, my point is, is I, I don't really understand what this guy's saying when he brought this stuff up earlier. Uh, yeah, so that's why I have Kobe over Kareem. So Jordan, Kobe, Kareem, and then I have Magic and Bird interchangeable. And I know a lot of people have Magic over Bird, you know, because Magic has five chips versus Bird, who has three. However, again, same reason I have Jordan over uh Kareem is kind of why I have Magic and Bird interchangeable, even though Magic has more championships. Magic played with someone who is arguably the GOAT. Uh, Larry Bird did not. Uh, so I have uh, Magic and Bird is inter kind of interchangeable. And I think it's only right because, you know, people often pair those two together for saving the NBA. You know, to me, those... Those two players' legacy is always linked together, and, you know, it would be hard for me to put one over the other. So I just kind of, Magic and Bird is interchangeable to me. Again, you know, Magic have more championships, but Magic played with someone who is arguably the GOAT. So his list isn't crazy. I mean, it, it's I don't agree with it, uh, but I don't think his list is that crazy. Now, I don't. I I don't know why he doesn't have LeBron up there, but he has Kareem up there. When they've done, it's, I'm, I'm not saying that LeBron's longevity is as good as Kareem's. In my opinion, it's not because he had won more championships, more MVPs, and he just lost the scoring title to LeBron. Um, so you can't, but what I'm saying is that they're more equatable, in my opinion. So I don't understand if he's got him up there for all these long-standing achievements over a career, why he doesn't have LeBron up there. To a lot of people. Uh, or at least is legitimately, legitimately in the GOAT conversation. Um, so yeah, that's my top five. That is why I have Michael Jordan over Kareem. Uh and uh, again, you know, I'm going to say this again because I feel the need to say this over and over again so that people understand, like, I have the utmost respect for the older players. So for people who have Bill Russell as the GOAT or Kareem as the GOAT or Wilt as the GOAT uh, or who have a combination of those players who fill up the top five and, you know, may not have Kobe in your top five uh you know, uh, I say you kind of be hard pressed not to have uh, Magic and Bird in the top five. So I don't have Bird in my top five, but to his point, yeah, it's everybody's list is individual. I just thought I just I don't understand his. I feel like there's not as much consistency. If you want to hear my top five, let me know in the comments, and I'll make a video about it. But I understand that because, again, you know, I respect the older players. And again, like I said, to me, I feel like if you weren't there to witness uh, those players play in real life, then there's no way you can grasp the full weight of their game, even with the stats, even with the highlights. It's, it's just no way to get a full feel just like uh just like uh, us trying to explain to these fanboys and the younger generation what it was like to grow up in the Jordan generation. So I get, I understand what he's saying. The thing that I would say is that, especially with the internet nowadays and YouTube, you're able to just watch full games if you'd like. Now I think for the icon, the iconism of these players not being able to witness how they were regularly on the news. That's one of these arguments I've heard lately is that Michael didn't have the pressure. That's absolute nonsense. He had media pressure all over the place. There's just social media now. It's just somebody trying to excuse like he was given all these things and everyone just assumed that he was, that there was no challenge, that essentially he just walked over everybody and that they didn't even put up a fight. It's absolutely ridiculous. He just dominated the era. 
Like it's like you know, we can talk about it, we can try to explain it as best we can, but there is no way to uh, know unless you experienced it. So anyway, yeah, that's my top five. Jordan, uh, Kobe, Kareem, and Magic and Bird interchangeable. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, do you agree with my reasons for having Michael Jordan as the GOAT over Kareem? And if you don't, uh, please, by all means, let me know uh, your reasoning. If you have Kareem as the GOAT, if you have other players as your GOAT, uh, let me know. Uh, drop your top five in the comments. You all have a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. All right. All right. I don't, I don't know what's going on with this video. He's got another 12 minutes on it, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm I going to add him to see if he wants to uh, see my video and my takes on it. But let me know what you think. I disagree with just plainly his reasoning that he can start his own offense and that he didn't play with an all-time great. I think those are part of it. But for me, it's more about the iconism, how – great he was just in general on the court and off the court the shoes the movies just the cult of personality that became of him he's still the most popular NBA player in the league today even though he doesn't play anyway let me know what you think about this and for everyone michael jordan fans are the best